Hi everyone! This time we are traveling to Florida to discover its national parks. We landed in Miami International Airport, rented a car here and went to our first spot. Welcome to Miami! And we start our journey from Clinton Park. It's almost without people here now. So let's check what we can find here. In Miami you can see lots of iguanas chilling in the sun, showing off their bright colors and birds flying all around. Crandon Park is a heaven for birds watchers. With numerous bird species inhabiting this area, visitors can spot shorebirds, wading birds, seabirds and migratory species through the park, especially along the coastline in the mangrove areas. Crandon Park Beach is seriously one of the prettiest places in South Florida. Here is super soft white sand and crystal clear blue water. No wonder it's always on the list of best beaches in the whole country. We stayed for six days at Homestead. And it's great location for those who want to visit Everglades National Park. Biscay National Park or explore Key West. Next day we decided to go fishing. On the Airbnb we found local guys that took us on a canal fishing. The crystal clear water of Miami offers excellent side fishing opportunities for this beautiful, hard fighting species. It was quite a cold morning for Miami, around 65 degrees, and the fish wasn't very active. So it was still a question if we would be able to catch anything that day. Fortunately, we were lucky. Brian and Case really knew what they were doing. They put us on a fish right away, and we were very excited when either me or Ira caught a peacock bass. It's a mullet, dude! It's a mullet! Oh no, it's a peacock! Big peacock! Keep reeling, keep reeling! Oh my god! <laughs> By the way, all the fish was safely returned back to the water. Alright, that was the fish. Yeah, that's the fish. Not so big, but it's better than that. But the largest fish was waiting for us at the end of our fishing trip. This might be the biggest of the year, man. Look at that. Oh, look at the size that? of that one, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's a seven pounder. Oh my god. <laughs> you can see the excitement that we all experienced. We really enjoyed this experience. I would strongly recommend it, and we will definitely go again next time we're in Miami. Coral Reef Park is a terrific large park that has a lot of sports fields and tennis courts, picnic areas, walking trails and a great playground. After fishing we were quite hungry so we decided to make a picnic right there in the park and also did a stretching yoga. A barbecue time. Mm. 
The next day we went to Everglades National Park. It took us around 30 minutes to get there. All visitors to Everglades National Park are required to pay an entry fee. It's $35 per car, but we bought an annual pass for all national parks in advance. It cost us only $80 per year. It's more convenient to buy it in the On our way to the park, we spotted our first alligator. Fun fact, it's pretty easy to tell alligators apart from the crocodiles. Alligators have wider jaws, which make them look less scary. Everglades National Park is the third biggest park in the US and the largest tropical wilderness of any kind in the US, covering about 1.5 million acres. The park is home to a unique ecosystem with sawgrass marshes, cypress swamps and diverse wildlife, including alligators, manatees and a variety of bird species. So we are on the Kinga Trail over here at the Royal Palma Visitor Center and it's supposed to be one of the best trails in this park and it's pretty short. I'm super excited to see what we see here. And Hinga Trail, this place is super famous for its birds. It's like a bird paradise, you'll see all kinds of them, big ones, small ones, colorful ones. In fact, it's difficult to remember the name of each bird, as some have funny names such as common moorhen, purple gallinula and of course, the bird for which the trail was named, then Hinga. And let's talk about alligators. And Hinga Trail is like their hangout spot. They love chilling by the water, soaking up the sun. But don't worry, they usually keep to themselves. And our next destination is 20 minutes away. It's very popular mahogany trail. This special place called the hammock is like a hidden paradise away from the noise of the past logging activities. Here are some of the oldest mahogany trees, here grown to incredible heights thanks to the hammocks elevated and dry land. On the way back we stopped at a popular place for both locals and tourists. Robert is here, people say this is a Florida hidden game. This fruit stand has more fruits and vegetables than you could imagine. They make delicious milkshakes and smoothies. By the way, they also have a zoo area full of goats and chickens and birds and turtles and whole hosts of others. Don't miss this stuff. Just look at this. It's ugly fruit. The second day in the park we decided to try some activities. Visitors can explore the park through airboard tours, hiking trails, kayaking and bird watching experiencing the unique beauty of this subtropical wilderness. We took our paddles and life vest at Flamingo Marina and we're going to our kayaks to Nine Mile Point. The Everglades area is a vast and varied ecosystem containing the largest mangrove forest in North America. Throughout the forest are brackish lakes whose waters are a mix of sweet fresh water and salt water. This is part of what makes the Everglades so special. In some places it was difficult to canoe through the mangroves, but it was a very unique experience, so if you are comfortable with alligators and crocodiles in the water, don't miss this activity. Everglades is the only place where alligators and crocodiles coexist.